Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava, and this is episode 8 of Let's Play Greece in Victoria 2. We left off having won a major victory against a tremendous amount of the world in the First Great War, because, unfortunately, everyone in the world seems to be very upset that we control all of this Turkish land. Probably mainly the Turks, and of course not us. However, it is definitely something that is at risk of turning into great wars, essentially, from now until the end of the game. In a lot of ways, that's not ideal. In a lot of ways, that is absolutely ideal. For instance, it was only 3.6 infamy to go ahead and take over all of these regions of Turkey uh, per state. So that was very good. We managed to get three states. I unfortunately realized as soon as the episode was over that we could have, for 3.6 infamy, asked for cars, gotten all of cars, and then released Georgia for a 5 infamy reduction, which would have saved us 1.4 infamy. Not even for free, but we would have gotten something for less than nothing, which would have been great. Alternatively, places like Albania, we could have taken over Albania and then released them as a satellite state. Now, Potentially, we would want to actually go in and take over Albania properly. Perhaps not, though. Uh, really, so that, Albania may be not the best example. Georgia is definitely a great example of a lost opportunity. We could have also released all of the Egyptian cores. However, that would have been pretty sloppy. That would have been these two, which are still colonial areas, but that might be something worth doing. Aleppo is really the issue since they don't have cores on all of Aleppo. So we would have to take over this one area separately as an Ottoman state. So for that reason, that wouldn't make all that much sense. Although it would definitely help us take over uh, Ankara and Adana, which they do have cores in. Although that would really just be so we could connect our European and Asian holdings, and we already connected them through the north. Uh, other than that, we are going to eventually... Well, we're going to have to annex the Ottomans in order to get them out of An Ankara. And we're going to need to do that to reform, realistically, either the Alexandrian or the Byzantine empires. Because Thrace, Anatolia, they're just very, very important parts. Uh, anyway, though, so diplomatically we're doing very well. The British, the Germans, and the Russians are all, are all our allies. And we're going to go ahead and attack the Egyptians right now. Uh, not crises, let's take a look. They're 75% of the way through civilizing. They have been dealing with problems with reactionaries, but their army is still intact enough that they've been defeating them. And that doesn't sit very well with me. So if we go roll on through, we can hopefully just, uh, just sort of take care of that pretty quickly. And that would just generally be a good idea. Uh, we're sitting on just an absolute ton of money because basically all of the major empires in the world are paying us off, or our allies, and even the ones that are paying us off are now also our allies. So we're just massively wealthy beyond any sort of comparison. Literally no one in the country is being taxed. We're giving negative tariffs to imported goods, so essentially we're paying our people to just be as successful as they possibly can in every way to the absolute fullest extent that we're able. So yeah, it's uh, good times to be Greek right now. Uh, at any rate, we're going to go ahead and justify war against the Egyptians. Uh, the only people who are friendly with them are us, or is us, is our empire. Uh, so yeah, we don't really have to worry too much about any negative consequences other than getting a decent amount of infamy, which we did. However, luckily not enough to push us over the brink. We are going to have to, we are going to have to be very careful with our infamy since we are right at the edge, essentially right at the precipice. Uh, looks like Italy's going to war against Austria-Hungary just again and again. Uh, we could ally Sweden. I've always been turning them down, but at this point we may as well, just because, well, we're already allied to almost every other country around them. We do have the largest and most powerful military in the world, the most prestige in the world. Our industry is severely lacking in comparison to those others, although we can kind of support it a little bit. 
we can't really do all that much simply because we don't have very populous core areas, although we are encouraging craftsmen in all of our most populous states. So we're industrializing as best we can, but it's not really all that great. Other than that, though, hopefully our people will enter a new era of prosperity since no one's paying any taxes. And, you know, that's basically... Uh, well, it just gives them more money to spend on the things that they want to spend it on. So hopefully they'll use that to get out of poverty and join a factory or something along those lines. I honestly don't really have any great plan for that. That was just kind of an incidental thing that happened because we managed to get war reparations out of all the great powers. So thanks, Great Wars. Those are actually pretty awesome if you win and it isn't horribly bloody. Uh, so at any rate, our army is already more or less in as good of positions as it needs to be to go take out the Egyptians, which aren't really all that much of an effective state in really any sort of sense at this point. That's not really their fault, just sort of a fall of circumstance and the fact that we have kind of been bludgeoning them with our state, which is, at this point, significantly more successful. We basically got all the army techs. Well, not basically, we actually do have all of the army techs. We're not going to get revolution and counter-revolution just yet. Uh, we can have five national focuses, but there simply are not enough Greek people to make that really something to do. Uh, we could get more industrial techs. Don't really see the point right now. High Seas Battle Fleet will help us out later on, but not so much right now. And so we'll just do that, and then we'll roll through all the prestige techs, and then through psychology, which really just for the regiment experience. You'll notice we don't really have any... Uh, experience markers on any of our armies. That's just because we haven't bothered to get any of that. At this point, we're going to be nearing a phase of the game where we can realistically see ourselves embroiled in war with great frequency against other great powers. I'm actually pretty happy with how articulate I'm coming off today, but we'll see how long that lasts. Alright, so we'll go ahead and declare war in order to take Upper Egypt. This will connect vaguely at least the touch, the smallest, gentlest touch of our Asian territories, if we include this as Asian, which I guess there's really no reason to do so. Uh, but it'll basically get one step closer to us connecting our empire in the three axes of control that we have, those being Europe, Asia, and Africa. So we'll just kind of march on through. Hopefully, when their army is destroyed, they'll get some sort of reactionary rebellion, and it'll push back their civilization progress, which will give us some, a larger window to just keep eating all of their lands for free, essentially, and for a very small amount of infamy. Looks like the Italians are moving into Dalma Dalmatia, which is not how you say that. It's something like Dalmatia. But I'm not going to be able to say that fairly accurately. And our army's pretty much just doing its thing. There's really not any real chance of an Egyptian uh, comeback. Oh, all of these communists are, well, just an unfortunate thing to have occur, this communist rebellion. We'll go ahead and just turn on some rebel suppression, just have our armies do that automatically. If we had more rebellions, through a larger portion of this game, then that would definitely be a concern. At this point, we're just a few years away. Let's see. We're just a few years away from gas attack, and once you can just kind of gas rebels, it doesn't really matter. And at this point, most of our empire is contiguous, so we don't have to worry about uh, any rebellions on islands just being impossible for us to get to or anything like that. So unfortunately, our big plot to see the Egyptians collapse into rebellion ended up just seeing us have a giant rebellion, although we're not going to collapse to it. And yeah, there's really no reason for us to allow them to win, since communism is really just a terribly tedious uh, stance for your government to take. It's a very tedious ideology, I'll say, if you're playing the role of the state. If we were a very small country and it was easier to manage the day-to-day -day of the entire economy, then perhaps. However, if you're a sprawling empire, then it's just kind of a pain. And there's really no great incentive 
unless you've just become a civilized nation, in which case you really want state control of your economy simply because capitalists will underperform in the initial phases of the game. Communism, though, absolutely terrible. No reason to take it on. Alright, so we can just go ahead and take Upper Egypt. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and just do that. There's no real reason to drag the war on other than the vague hope that they will get reactionary rebels, which they very well may. Uh, a lot of our great power allies, mainly the Germans and the Americans, broke their alliance with us over the course of this war, which is very rude of them. I believe the Swedes also did so, but I wasn't paying very much attention. They did. And yeah, fairly soon all the rebellions will be put down. It doesn't look like we'll have any occupied territories or any territories of ours be occupied by the rebels, so that is good. Uh, yeah, we may as well. We'll take it to the end of the month. Brazil broke their alliance with us, but we never really liked them anyway. Alright, and there we go. Greek Africa now goes all the way to the Suez. And, uh, yeah, that's basically that. We just need Palestine and really either of these states. Oh, look at that. Germany wants us back. We'll go ahead and accept them. The United States does not, but, meh. Kind of sucks. Not really a big deal. And after that, we're just going to kind of sit and enjoy our ridiculous amount of prosperity. Hopefully our Romanian friends are able to deal with all of this nonsense. Romanian reactionaries, so worst case, they just become an even more absolute monarchy than they already are. And I'm not really terrified of that. We can build battleships, which is great news. I don't know if we can actually build them, but we have the technology to do so. I wonder if we can actually build them. I think we did in the last... Yeah, okay, yeah, so we can build battleships. I'm not going to do that yet. We'll wait until we lose all this foreign money and see where our budget actually lies. Austria-Hungary wants to ally us. Sure, Austria-Hungary. Uh, let's see. We cannot influence other great powers. Weird. I wonder who's about to replace them. I wonder what actual powers aren't great powers. So you have Germany in rank number one, that's very good for them. UK number two, US number three, us, France, Japan, Italy, and Austria-Hungary. So is it the Russians? Are they coming back? They are. Cool. Interesting that they're a secondary power, I guess, just because of the Great War. What will be very interesting and a little sad is if none of the great powers actually fall to some sort of political rebellion, and I guess just generally political chaos. And it doesn't look like any of them will. They all have enough left over of their armies to maintain domestic order, and that's, I mean, kind of boring, but it doesn't really matter for us. The Ottomans are still a bourgeois dictatorship, so maybe they will collapse again. Although that's not really the fault of the Great War, it's just a fault of the fact that we've been bludgeoning them with our military the entire time. Uh, so yeah, we really don't need to have our army funded to 100%. We're still going to do it, uh, just because there's no reason not to either, since everything is free, and we're just doing amazingly well. And we have a ton of extra infantry, so we'll just divide it among, I guess, just these two armies, which seem like they could use it. And we're not going to go ahead and deal with the process of getting rid of any undermanned brigades, just because we kind of do need them. Well, not really need them, however, just be too inconvenient to, to uh, get rid of them. So we'll just group these together. They're not really ideal armies. No, I mean, I guess this one's pretty close. We'll take this undermanned infantry group and put it in the other army, though. Alright, so that all done... Spain is in the sphere of the Italians, which is deeply inconvenient. Although, they're not really our allies either, so it doesn't really matter too much. I kind of wish the Romanians would get their acts together, especially since those are nationalists, at least in part, which have risen up. So we'll go help them deal with their rebellions, because we're just that good of a sphere leader and ally. So go ahead and give us military access there, buddy. Alright, we'll just kind of flow on over. So I went through the game files 
in preparation. Indian Pan Nationalists. All right. Well, let's go go roll on over and prevent that from being a catastrophe. Although it is very interesting. They'll at least take control of Kutch. Kutch. There are definitely a large number of Indian Pan Nationalists, and it looks like they won't actually take control of that region. And look, Sweden wants to ally us again. All right, well, we'll definitely just roll in and defeat these rebels. It won't be the easiest thing, and we might lose a few troops. Hopefully they just kind of shoo away and go over there. And it looks like they're already losing quite a few of their troops. Uh, we'll just let them take over that province. And once we have all of our forces nearby... Where are they going? Oh, okay, into the French-controlled area. Well, I'm completely fine with that. Alright, so we'll just station these troops around, and I don't think that they'll go into anywhere that's Persian, so that basically cuts them off. And if they want to come attack us, then they're more than welcome to do so. They won't win. And if they do, that would just be absolutely shocking. Uh, we'll go ahead and expand all the naval bases that we still can, or that we are now able to. And we do have quite a few naval bases uh, that are just really underdeveloped. Though I do think that in this last portion of the game, we will have a decent chance of becoming a significant naval power in the world, uh, just due to our wealth and very powerful military already. And we'll go ahead and start rolling through all these prestige reform or prestige technologies, and hopefully we'll do that fairly quickly. And then we'll go smash all of these Romanian rebels. We'll probably have to do an occupation. That shouldn't be too hard. So, yes. That's basically all of that. Looks like we can create some states in the desert. Hooray for the Greeks and their deep love of random deserts. Oh, look, and we don't even have to deal with an occupation because they didn't manage to take the province over. So that's very convenient. I wish we could support the Romanians more directly, but it doesn't look like we will be able to actually do that. And the Russians are a great power again. Alright, so as I was mentioning, I looked through the game files, and essentially a crisis, I believe, can happen once every 18 months. I'm not actually sure what specifically triggers that, uh, so who knows if that's actually 100% correct. But uh, it was at least every, eight, or at, at, yes, at the most frequent, one every 18 months. I don't know if it takes into consideration peace deals uh, still being active for previous Great Wars. And, you know, I'm not ready to make a claim as to uh, whether or not it does. I simply don't know. Alright, so, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to sit back and chill for a little bit. Although, we're chilling in a very successful place. We've definitely achieved a lot of our aims, a lot of our ambitions. Right now, the borders are just absolutely terrible everywhere, and it looks like Egypt isn't going to fall to a reactionary rebellion anytime soon. Okay, look at that. So, oh, what is this? Hmm... So Russia is going back after Austro-Hungarian, after the uh, Austro-Hungarian state of Budajak, which we gave them in the Great War, and basically the whole world is fighting the Austrians. So we're not going to answer their call to arms. Uh, we may as well just answer the Russian call. Does this allow the crisis to still go on? It does. That's annoying. Well, all right. We'll just take our 34 prestige right now. It looks like that uh, also stopped us from collecting all of those glorious, glorious war reparations. So we're going to basically go back to a regular economy. So sorry about that, poor. But uh, yeah, that's just not sustainable. All right, so we're not going to tax the rich because, you know, we really need them and their money. 
And we're probably going to go into a humongous economic downturn. Sorry, everyone in poverty, but we really can't just maintain what we've had going on for all that time. Now, we really didn't need to join this war. It's not like the Austrians are going to pull off anything insane. Although, maybe Russia's just going to collapse on their own. Interesting. Well, we're not going to help them. So, yeah, we'll just kind of do our own thing. And hope that Russia collapses, although they're really not going to. I don't really foresee any way that they could. And the British are definitely coming in in mass. And who knows where they're going. Maybe they're going to go battle the Austrian military? Seems like they could just do any amount of occupations whatsoever. Oh, okay, so they're going to the war province, the war goal province. We really shouldn't have joined this war. It was probably a very bad call. We're just going to reduce our infamy reduction for really no reason. I guess we could call in the Romanians just because... Actually, we can't because we're not the war leader. Alright, well, whatever. Not the worst of all cases. Although this is probably going to become a prolonged war. Brazil wants to ally us again, we may as well. Yeah, and Austrian forces are just going to be picking off other groups. Russian forces should be able to pick off Austrian forces, though. More or less, at any rate. Alright, so I'm definitely kicking myself for actually joining this war. There's really no benefit for us in doing so. We just kind of did it. Uh, Austria has about two ports in their entire country, so we'll go blockade this one. And yeah, other than that, we'll just kind of stay put. We could go help this British army. I don't really want to. And they'll be able to support themselves in just a moment. Now, in a way, I do... Morally, I suppose, support the Austrians more than any of these other parties, especially because we did give them this province for their help in the last war. Although, realistically, I don't want to fight Britain and... Well, actually, who all was it? Yeah, Britain, France, Russia... That's not really a fight you just kind of take on on a whim. Hopefully, though, they will... Well, actually, they're not going to aim for a white piece. We're aiming for acquiring Boojack, and I'm not actually sur sure how much of a... Well, just how much war score that would cost. We will, however, go pick up this army, and we'll just drop it over there and destroy the Austrian fleet just because we can. And we may as well just go march this army over to Vienna. And that will probably make them realize that they don't want to fight us if they don't need to. And then we'll just white peace out of this. And yeah. So that's a fairly straightforward uh, little objective we're getting. And we are getting quite a bit of industry fairly quickly, so that is very good. Hopefully our navy is able to win this. We have a bunch of men of war and frigates, so honestly we might not be able to. Do we have any more navy? No, we don't. That is the entirety of our naval force. Well, let's go ahead and build some battleships. We'll actually build a decent number of them. We can't build cruisers, though, which is kind of weird, but we can build battleships, which are superior. And we're going to hope very, very hard that the Austrian force we're about to unleash is, well, outdated as our force. And it looks like they're kind of that outdated. Although the battle isn't really going exceptionally well. Oh no, it is. Hopefully we don't lose too many transports, otherwise this will kind of suck. But they're all clipper transports, so we need to get steam transports anyway, so it really isn't a big deal. 
In fact, we probably should just get rid of our navy and reconstruct it with an oil-driven navy. Although that might be something for later times. Hey, look at that. We have Venice. Or, not Venice. Uh, Vienna. Very different things, those. Alright, and their navy is basically just completely dead. And we're occupying their capital. Will they let us go now? They will. Alright, good war. We supported our allies, and that's what counts. Alright, so where are we collecting all of our boats? In Istanbul. That is suitable. And now we'll get back to the just regular goal of burning infamy. Too bad these aren't nationalists. It'd be very nice to have the Austro-Hungarian Empire just sort of collapse and feed Serbia and Romania the cores that they so deserve. Although it doesn't look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. So Egypt, they're going to be a problem. They're 90% of the way to civilizing, so is Ethiopia. We're really losing our opportunity to take these territories over for free, or essentially for free, because once they civilize, it'll just kind of be a pain. I don't really think there's anything we can do about that at this point. Uh, we just don't have the infamy, the infamy uh, capacity to actually strike them in any real meaningful way. Although we could take over Ethiopia in some some instance if we were very lucky. We'll go ahead and give our people pensions just to support the economy a little. Alright, so anyway, we could form Byzantium right now, go annex Ethiopia before they westernize. Ah, oh, see, look at that. These poor reactionaries don't stand a chance. Hmm. So we're truced with them until a little over the turn of the century. I don't know. There's really not much we can do. And that is pretty unfortunate. Oh, and the Spanish are going into Hejaz. They're probably going to try to take Hejaz completely over. Oh, they're trying to take over this portion. Hail. That's still annoying. Well, let's build our army up a little bit. Yeah, we'll just build it all the way. Alright, so that should be decent. Uh, we're not building full armies in the sense that I usually do. Just fairly close to that. Although in Europe we are going to. So it's fairly close. So yeah, ultimately though... We're really getting to the point where we can't do much against Ethiopia or Egypt. I don't want to form the Byzantine Empire. I, I really don't. However, at this point, we're going to lose so many opportunities if we keep putting it off. And I, I just especially don't want to lose these opportunities. So, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to form the Byzantine Empire. It does make sense that our capital is Constantinople anyway. And I mean, it really makes no sense for us to leave poor, poor Istanbul. I mean, come on. Alright, honestly, I really don't want to do that, though. Maybe, maybe we'll get to a point in this game we where we are in the position where we can go past the infamy limit. And when that happens, I would prefer to be Greece. So we'll just let the uh, situation unfold as it already is. Alright, so yeah, I guess that's the decision made. We're going to lose out on Ethiopia, or if we do end up taking it, it'll be expensive, and we will have it as states, and that will help with our industry later on. We'll go ahead and get psychology text to get those experience. 
And, oh man, isn't that just awful? I absolutely hate that. <laughs> Spain is really just clogging up our rightful sphere of influence. Admittedly, we could be adding these Arab states to our sphere of influence, although we have not. So, in fact, we should probably do that. I believe that technically counts as being Asian. So we will go ahead and accept that, at least for the immediate future, we're going to just have to influence these people diplomatically. We can't just go annex them outright. And while that is sad, it is probably for the best, at least for now. We could also probably influence Persia, although I assume they hate us because we have so much of their countryside. We can cut Punjab down to size. Don't really want to since they're already in our sphere. And I know we're close to civilizing, so we don't really have to worry about bludgeoning them in that sense. And I guess whatever we do end up taking from Egypt will end up being states, so that is somewhat helpful for us later on. Now we can go ahead and just encourage more craftsmen in Thrace, which is good in a way. We will also build steam transports. We'll just go ahead and build 20. That way we will have essentially the uh, a navy that's large enough no matter what we end up coming uh, to want to do with it. We'll really just be limited by the number of battleships we have and we can always just produce more, although it will be expensive since we're actually paying for our army and need to care about this sort of thing. We will drop our expenditures considerably and that means we can stop taxing the rich and the middle class. And we'll even tax the poor a little less. So, appreciate that. Alright, and that'll probably be the last tech we get this year. After that, we will just rush forward for the next science technology. Austria-Hungary wants to ally us again, so we'll go ahead and just hop back on that. And, yeah, from there we'll just kind of see where the world takes us. I guess where the world takes itself as well. So yeah, we're doing fairly well, I would say. We managed to get all the reforms we already want. Unemployment subsidies and pensions we'll also probably go for at some point. I don't really want to give the people any right or reason to vote or expect to be able to vote or anything like that. Absolute monarchy is perfectly fine with us. And, uh, yeah, other than that, we'll just keep making armies. Everyone loves armies. Speaking of, we should probably split this group up before it starts taking horrible attrition. Seems even. There we go. Now we'll just park these guys against Egypt, since they're really one of the few powers we would actually realistically be fighting, other than Ethiopia, if we can do that quickly enough. And who knows, maybe we can. It's only 10 infamy right now. And it is tempting, although we really can't afford it. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and fund our army again. Sorry everyone in the lower parts of our economic strata. So unfortunately, in about a year, we would have been able to deal with this fairly easily just with general gas attack. Right now, not so much. Come on. Why can't you guys... Oh, wow. That's really annoying. Alright, so they should just be able to go right there. And we'll interdict them. Alright, so we won't even lose any control of our territories. That's very good. We'll turn off automatic rebel suppression since that just weirdly inconvenienced us and made it so we almost couldn't change where our boats were going. Alright, um, yeah. So we're really in a good spot just to slowly trickle upwards. You'll notice that we're third in great powers, we've surpassed the United States of America, which is kind of awesome. Obviously they don't have anywhere near what uh, political power and prestige and prominence they'll eventually get historically, 
I look in the French even want to ally us. Honestly, that's the sort of thing that makes me really know that I'm doing well in a campaign, is when our allies stop being places like Transvaal or Brazil, even though I think we are backed allied with Brazil, but when our allies become states such as, you know, France and Russia and Germany and the United Kingdom, and not Italy because they hate us because we own Sicily and they're not really fond of non-Italians owning Italian soil. But other than that, we just have all sorts of great allies, not the Spanish either. And I don't really want to be allied to Spain because they do have all of these lands that we want. But yeah, it's a, it's a good deal. Also not China pretty much ever, just because of our portion of China. And not Japan anymore, probably just because of our number of allies. Yeah, too many alliances really soils that one. Uh, let's take a look back at Romania, doing okay. Unfortunately, we can't set Hunt Rebels and have our guys hunt Romanian Rebels. Oh, and Austria-Hungary broke their alliance with us, which is a little weird. I guess they don't like the fact that we are the protector of all of the states they hate. Eh, which makes sense. Can't really fault them for that. Alright, so let's see. Immediately we'll get anti-rationalism, and after that we'll roll on into military directionism for that general gas attack. And we really are in one of the calmer eras of the game, just sort of in between world-crushing great wars. Plus we don't have to worry about a crisis for another like 18 months uh, since the other one went through. Which I'm not actually sure how much time that gives us. At any rate, there is an almost certainty that the next crisis is going to take place in our country, or in Austria. So, you know, let's hope for Austria. It actually might be Romania, which would be inconvenient, because I don't really want to commit national suicide over the Romanians, and I also really don't want to deal with a free Bulgaria. A free Hungary would be kind of cool, and we could probably support them against the Austro-Hungarians. So, you know, maybe that. Bulgaria is really the one state I don't want to see independent. Alright. We'll go ahead and give people some unemployment subsidies, just so they don't you know, die of poverty if they lose their jobs, but it's not like we're going to let our factories collapse. And we are 8th in the world industrially. So that's good. That is good. An interesting tactic we could use to get the Ottomans out of uh, basically just Thrace and, Nish and uh, this whole area. Is this actually called Thrace? I think Thrace might actually be this region. It is in this game. Anyway, out of Anatolia. In order to get them out, we could free people instead of liberate country, the Egyptians, and get them out of everything but Ankara proper, and then we'll just encircle them there. Although, that is kind of just a process, and we're probably going to have to fight a crisis war against them at any rate later on. So there's no real reason to push it. And we'll just kind of see how the cards fall. If we get further in the campaign, and it still doesn't look like we're going to be able to take them out, then we'll probably go over the infamy limit and really just try very hard to make this work. And, you know, we'll just have to see how that plays out at that point. Going to turn off the troop rally point right there, since we may as well just have our people roll all the way over to Constantinople. And who knows, if we're lucky, maybe we can ally with with a Nijed and then use them to kick out the Spanish. Since I'd rather just have independent little Arab states kicking about technically underneath us, rather than, you know, the Spanish Empire kicking about in the region just kind of being a pain. Now we're already down to 18 infamy which is very good. We're not going to assert our position in random countries that we don't actually care about because it doesn't actually help us whatsoever. 
Although Sokoto is a place that we do want influence in. We're really just not going to take infamy if we can ever avoid it. And we'll get that sweet military directionism, and then once that's done, we'll pretty much never have to worry about a rebellion for the rest of the game unless we want it to win. Which the only rebellion that we would allow to win would be the fascists. Just because fascism is the best type of government in Victoria too. I will make that clear distinction, but they really are. Especially if you're a first world country, fascism is just absolutely amazing for you to be able to really just not deal with constant revolts and attempts at revolution, which almost any other form of government faces in the late game of Victoria. Uh, the reason for that is because fascists, it, it, they have a little quirk to them, and it's kind of fun and sometimes annoying. But if the fascists are not in control of your country, then they will refuse any single reform, no matter what it is. However, once they are the ruling party, then they actually don't care whatsoever ideologically what they're doing. They'll just pass reforms to pass reforms. Which, you know, is interesting, but the thing that really pays off is that if your people are very upset and clamoring for reform and you have a fascist government in control of your country, then you can just pass reforms just forward and backwards till the end of time. And as long as you don't pass anything too terribly incendiary, your people just kind of are okay with it. They like the political drama more so than, you know, actual meaningful reform. As, you know, it's just kind of human in a way. Although I'm not going to get on some big tangent about, you know, current social issues. Uh, so let's take a look over at India. Indian pan-nationalists, that's pretty weird. I'm not actually sure. I think they would need to have a great power Indian state in order to flip all of these non-great power states into some form of India. And it looks like the British army is just going to be rolling back and forth, clearing them out. So that's not really something likely to happen. I am really tempted to try to take over Ethiopia. We're going to move some troops over, just in case. And we'll see how it goes. Now, if we do get to 15 infamy, and they're still not civilized, then that's just too, too low hanging of a fruit for us to avoid. And at that point, I mean, we're not really guaranteed to get the full infamy of just rolling in and taking their lands over. We could even switch from pro-military to just an absolute to an absolutely jingoistic party. Uh, the one risk of that is that it would put our factories in a place of flux where they wouldn't be directly subsidized by the state, at least for a short interval. And during that short interval, a few factories could go bankrupt, although we are giving our people unemployment subsidies, so it wouldn't be some, like, terrible downfall. So, yeah. In a lot of ways, though, we're doing very well. We've managed to not pass any political reforms, which, if we were in the Americas, would kind of suck since we wouldn't get any migrants, but it's not like we're going to get any migrants where we're at already. Uh, speaking of migrants, let's take a look at who's winning. America has about 5,000, so America's winning out loud. Um, yeah, it's really to be expected. That happens all the time. Brazil's doing fairly well. Brazil, Colombia, and the United States. Kind of British Canada, but not so much. And we have a few people. A bunch of our people are moving to Brazil, but even more to the U.S. Alright, Austro-Hungarian West Galicia... So, we're not going to support Austria. Germany backed... Ooh, Germany backed Austria. Well, we're going to just take a side seat to this one. Which is kind of unfortunate because... Well, we're going to join the, the Germans since they're almost certainly going to win. But we're probably not going to be able to get very much out of this. We could conceivably sit this war out. Uh, or maybe if it's just going to be the Germans against the world, then we'll just kind of not support them. But if the British support them, and the Italians support them, then, you know, 
Germany's going to be back-to-back -back World War champions. So we'll go ahead and get artillery fire. We're probably not going to have that done in time, but we should get gas attack. And that'd be pretty cool for us. Uh, we know that the Russians don't really have very much in the way of troops pretty much anywhere. They have a big stack right there, and that's it. And a largish stack right there. So we'll just kind of avoid that. And, uh, yeah, just draw these troops over. And it really shouldn't be much of an issue. And I don't even imagine it'll turn into a war. Although, you know, 50-50 chance of it. Uh, so yeah, we'll just kind of watch, see what these guys do. Colonial Incident. Oh my god, I need this. Alright, cool, that's everything we've dreamed of. We can go take Palestine right now and no one can stop us. Can we actually take Palestine right now? No, because of the crisis. What an absolute bummer. Alright, well hopefully, I mean this will go for 230 something days. If it doesn't turn into a war then we can immediately declare war on the Spanish. If it does become a war then we can declare war immediately upon the Spanish anyway and just kind of deal with the consequences thereof. We'll build a bunch of battleships, and then two groups of cruisers. We're probably not going to get those done in time. Uh, no matter, we're still going to start. Uh, we're going to... Hmm, should we leave the 30 stack, or take the 30 stack? We will take the 30 stack. Oh, cool, and France gave up, so it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, the Italians probably have a decent navy. We'll just go drop troops back off. So the Italians are very realistically going to just join the war on the side of their allies. Which, yeah, I can't really fault them for that. Although I would certainly like to. And we'll just start carrying troops over to Africa. Well, I guess we could drop these troops off here. That'd probably not be a bad call. And we'll just pick up as many forces as we can. I'm not sure if we will control the seas in the very initial stages of the war. Uh, once our battleships and things come uh, to completion, we should be fine. We'll definitely fund our navy more, and I guess we'll just tax everybody. Sorry, Rich. Alright, but we almost certainly have enough forces just generally spread around. Huh, so let's think about this. Well, the only war goal we want from the Spanish is going to be their colonial possessions. So we don't really need to fabricate a war goal, uh, since all we could really fabricate on would be their states or to release nations. So we could have them release the Egyptians, but if they're about to westernize anyway, then it would really not make any sense for us to do that. Uh, we could justify adding them to our sphere of influence, which would be interesting, though not necessarily ideal. Uh, so, yeah, where are our navies? Well, this group's over here. We'll go ahead and detach the transports, and we'll just kind of leave them in Sicily for now. Our battleships will go use to bludgeon whatever Spanish navies we can find, and this group, we will leave the transports attached to them, since it doesn't really matter, since they're all terribly outdated. Not really sure where the Spanish navy went. Uh, we should probably block the Italians from just roving into Sicily and hope really, really hard that our navy is more powerful than theirs. And other than that, let's take a look. Who's Italy allied to? Germany, that could be a problem. Let's go ahead and declare this war. Place in the sun. We want Palestine. We need Palestine. Our culture yearns for Palestine. The Russians will join. The Germans will join. And so will all of our little, like, nonsense states. France and the UK will not, but we don't really need them. The main reason we're calling our allies is just so Germany doesn't join the Spanish, as that would be pretty much the biggest disaster possible. Alright, Brazil, Serbia, Romania, Montenegro, Bosnia, Germany, oh thank god, not surprised, France, whatever, Russia, cool, UK, whatever. That's good enough. We're just going to plow through, win this war in probably a matter of weeks which I guess is kind of the thing everyone said about every great war ever, but it's not a great war, it's just us smashing into Italy. 
and Liberia wants to ally us, but there's no reason for us to ally Liberia. Oh, and I forgot that there's going to be a front right there. Oh, but it doesn't matter because the Germans are just pressing into Italy. Maybe if they do enough harm, then the Austrians will go take back Karenstein Stiermark. So that'd be cool. Uh, let's see, Oman. Go ahead and influence you guys. Oh, looks like we didn't lose very many boats, so that's pretty great. Now I'll just go smash into that one army. I don't believe we have gas attack yet. Do we have gas attack yet? No. In fact, we... I don't know. We, fit, we would be able to get gas attack. We just haven't. But that's not really that much of a concern. This is pretty much the most amazing uh, outcome for us just getting a Cassus Belly. Admittedly, our armies didn't do too hot in that battle. We'll just pull our forces out of that occupation. And our people are vaguely in support of reforms right now, so we'll go ahead and give you guys a little bit more in the way of unemployment subsidies, although nobody's unemployed right now. So it's kind of unimportant. And once we have Palestine, then we're pretty close to achieving all of our objectives. The Dutch want to ally us, we don't really need to ally them. The French want to ally us, and that's actually pretty cool, so we'll do that. Oh! Oh, huh. One of the Chinese satellite states. We're not going to ally them, because it'd be kind of cool to have a really powerful China. And we don't really want to mess that one up. Although, admittedly, a really powerful China does run the risk. Where's Halib? Oh, right. The Spanish have a military. Right. Okay, I honestly didn't expect anything in the way of a military response from the Spanish. I know that's a little ridiculous, given that they are kind of an empire. Why in God's name? Okay, so our forces tried to go hunt rebels in a really stupid way. And they're not well and they're not uh, ready or willing to accept peace just yet. So we're going to turn off automatic rebel suppression so our armies stop murdering themselves for absolutely no reason. Ah, oh, wow, that is such a pain. Well, we can probably rescue them, but wow, that is such an awful... Oh, hey, look, the Germans are rolling in. Well, not enough to actually help, so we'll just pull out of there. Alright, well, that was inconvenient. And the Spanish actually do have a fairly considerable force in theater now. Uh, we'll just roll these troops over to deal with that. Alright. Uh, we do have enough forces. I don't really think it's much of a concern. Please stop hunting rebels where there are no rebels and actually just man the frontier. Alright, now we're getting attacked. Yep. Come on. Not what I'm trying to do. There we go. Now we have indirect artillery fire, which is pretty cool. We'll get bolt-action rifles. We maybe would have wanted to do that in the reverse order, but it doesn't look like it matters since we we're just winning that out loud. And we'll just keep rolling through. Bam! Gas attack. That's pretty much all we need, and now we're going to just dominate. So, yeah. A little bit of a setback there. We lost more forces than we really had any need to. But that's war for you. It doesn't always go perfectly. And these weren't really the best laid plans. This is really just us thinking, oh my god, we can take a whole bunch of their stuff for basically free. Well, not so much a whole bunch, but all the stuff that we really want or need. And it looks like we're done with our truce with the Egyptians, so we'll just go ahead and justify the demand of a concession. And we'll just roll into Transjordan as well. Uh, Italians are putting up a weirdly good fight, which is actually doing considerable damage to our war score, and that really cannot be allowed. They're also intercepting our navy as it comes to be formed, and that we really absolutely cannot allow. On the right side, we're not losing any ships. So what's the deal? What's going on here? 
All right, the Austro-Hungarians are doing their part, which is very good. The Germans, however, are kind of faltering, which you wouldn't really expect from the Germans. Huh. The Italians are resting in Ottoman ports. Not really unexpected, although the Ottomans are spearlings, so... It's interesting we can't clamp down on that sort of thing. Hmm. Huh. Alright, we're not going to add Egypt to our sphere of influence just yet, since we are going to try to take some more land off of them. Now I'll go roll our armies back over here and just retake those territories. I'm fairly sure in good time... Oh wait, yeah, those are Italian forces. Weird. Uh, I'm sure, though, that in good time, we will be able to... What am I even saying? I mentioned earlier in this session that I was articulate today, and now I've managed to screw it up. Uh, we're going to just try to take over Egyptian stuff. We're going to hope that it works out and we'll add them to our sphere later if we can't annex them, and we'll probably try to annex them no matter what ends up happening. Uh, it's cool that the Austrians are supporting us, and we didn't take very much infamy justifying against the Egyptians. Romania is just constantly having problems. Oh, right. Didn't realize the Italians would be doing this sort of thing. Ah, uh, okay, now they're fighting us. Cool. Alright, and it looks like they are at the point where they are willing to just sort of give us Palestine. That's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to actually stay at war with them for a moment, just so the Austrians have a better chance of getting some of their cores back, since I'm not really too fond of a powerful Italy, and this is a great chance for us to not really do anything and also bludgeon them quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, then we'll go ahead and take Transjordan, and if we're able to pull off one more war against the Egyptians before they westernize, then we'll just be able to outright annex them after that. Uh, we're probably going to have to drop or at least severely reduce our ambitions uh, in the way of, of uh, making the Ottomans release all their cores, or having the Spanish do so, but the Spanish only have three Egyptian provinces once we take over the one that we're going for. We'll go ahead and declare war, take over that Transjordan, and I'll just roll our forces over into them. We have gas attacks, so it doesn't really matter all that much. And we can probably just smash their army in their capital, and that'll be almost certainly good enough. Oh, they even went out and engaged us. Cool. If they have a reactionary rebellion, then that's just the best news possible, and we might even just stay in the war and let them get occupied for the sake of letting them have a rebellion. As we're really at that point now where it makes more sense to just let them have that happen. Alright, looks like the French are taking advantage of the Germans' relative weakness. Uh, Alright, at least the Germans have... Well, alright, that should work out. We're not going to join them, but we're just going to leave that up. And this will actually probably go poorly for the Germans, since all of their forces are engaged against the Italians right now. Oh, huh, Romatia wants... Croatia and Dalmatia. God, that makes no sense. What? Wait, what? Where do they want? Croatia. Oh, Croatia acquires Dalmatia. Alright, that makes more sense. I mean, not all that much, but it's actually pretty cool. In fact, I'm entirely willing to make peace right now for those terms. They would accept them. Sweet. Cool. Bam. Go. Interesting, now we have a Yugoslavia in play. Very interesting. I'm... yeah, neat, cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and start influencing Croatia as well. And now look at that, we have an entire row of little Balkan friends. And the German army is released to go battle the French. And hopefully the Russians don't decide to just sort of butt in on that, which they might. And other than that, that is a very oddly productive sort of episode. It's uh, it's the turn of the century, and that's pretty cool for us. I really do want to just sit on Egypt at least long enough for them to have a reactionary rebellion. 
And I think, honestly, at this point, that's the thing to do. Because if we manage to get them through to the point of a reactionary rebellion, we could go ahead and just sort of snag ourselves Ethiopia really quickly. Looks like the Italians think that they're going to defeat the Austrians now, which is unfortunate, but not entirely unexpected. And, you know, we'll, I guess, find out if the German war machine is able to withstand the French, uh, just kind of revenge machine. So, you know, good luck to you guys. Although that may come up later. Alright, so we'll just kind of roll away from the Egyptian capital. Hopefully their rebels will, you know, come show up, get involved in this whole political, political thing they got going on. Oh, cool. French and German forces fighting in Greek Africa. I think the Germans are going to pull this one off, so great, great work, Germany. We're not going to join either side since we are allied to both of them. And, you know, that's a pretty good way to not be allied to both of them. And God knows, well, it's actually interesting, the French didn't even ask us to join them. So one issue is that potentially the Egyptians will just fully westernize while we're occupying them. And then potentially, if they do that, then uh, I'm not sure if we could just take over Transjordan. And we're already at an hour, so we should possibly, quite possibly, be making peace with them just so we can end the episode and have it, you know, be kind of sensible as a cutoff point. And at this point, a lot of time is going to be going through where we're not really achieving anything. Oh, and France offered Germany a white peace, or the Germans accepted a white peace with uh, France. That's what it is. Austria is still in their war. Oh, Sicilian nationalists. Good thing we have gas attack and troops occupying the entire island. So it's going to suck for you guys. I wonder if any Greeks are actually moving over there. We'll check that out and then probably come to the point where we end this. Yeah, we actually have a little bit of Greek... Greek influence. So that's kind of cool. In a hundred years, who knows, it might actually be a fully Greek area. Alright, so we'll wait one or two more months. We can't wait forever. Hey, look at that. A place in the sun. Alright, we'll, we'll stop right now. And we'll just kind of hope. Hmm, we could demand another concession. Not gonna do it, though. We'll just propose peace. And there we go! We have achieved our great objective in, you know, a kind of incomplete form, but we've still done it. We now have... Uh, you could now walk a regiment from India all the way to Athens, all the way to Mongu. And with the small exception of millions and millions of Chinese subjects, that is the entire population of our empire, now fully territorially contiguous in just an awful sort of snaky manner that we'll hopefully be able to clear up over the next 32 years of great wars. Which, you know, is probably going to be interesting in some way or another, and thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I think at this point we're entering an era where it's going to be incremental progress intermixed with massive great wars. So we'll see, I guess, how many of those we have. And I just realized I totally forgot to find out how many casualties ran in the Great War. Uh, but I'll, I, I, I will actually go ahead and do that now, and I'll go ahead and just attach that to the last episode, and also to this one, because it, it'll be interesting. We'll just kind of tabulate the wars that go on. You know, just for the sake of having metrics. At any rate, thank you very much for watching once again. Uh, have a great day.